taking a trip into space and into the future. The Doctor and Bill, along with Nardole, bite off more than they can chew as they land on a space station without oxygen. The suits charge you by the breath, so you better hold it in as the Doctor will have to say goodbye to one of his favorite toys. Yes! Yes, we mean his eyes. It's time for Zombies in Space on This Week in the Vortex. Broadcast amplitude at maximum capacity. Transmitting through time and space in three, two, one. Welcome to the Vortex. Voices from the Vortex Reviews, Doctor Who, Series 10, Episode 5, Oxygen. Uh, okay, and everyone can breathe. Whew. <laughs> uh. Hi guys, this is Matt. And this is Taylor. And we are back for another exciting adventure of yes. Doctor Who Reviews. And if my calculations are correct, we have about uh, a thousand breaths left, so we better make this podcast oh. count. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them count. Don't laugh! Stop <laughs> laughing. Mm. Uh, guys, but I'm just so a... funny. <laughs> 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 guys, this was a really great episode. Uh, I am excited to talk about this. Me too. Of course, I just want to put out... I want to throw out up front, uh, Oxygen, Episode 5. It's written by Jamie Matheson, who is one of our, uh, Taylor and I's personal favorite writers of New Who. Uh, wrote Mummy and the Orient Express, Flatline, The Girl Who Waited, and now, now Oxygen. And I'll tell you what, man. This is, I, obviously, every other one has been spectacular. And this is no no exception. Yeah, yeah. And this is, you know, I, I said it last episode, Jamie Matheson, please don't let me down. And he did not. This episode was... It, there were thrills. There were chills. There were <laughs> spills. No, I don't know. But it was... <laughs> it was so good. I, 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 was, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, like, watching this episode. I was so entranced. It, it was so good. Yeah, I, I'll tell you something. Um, I, well, we'll get into it here. But, yeah, no, this was great. This was great. Guys... First thing we want to do is we want to talk about the monster and the plot for this. Now, I know we said zombies in space. That is obviously not what happened. <laughs> that is what the promo showed us. Yes. That's not what happened. No, no, no. Um, we did not have uh, uh, zombies. In fact, unlike having a real monster, we had technology was the actual monster. Oh, that pesky technology. <laughs> oh, capitalism. Technology um, was the monster all along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the hobbits were right. We really need to go back to the Shire. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it was the spacesuits. And that I like that. See, here's the thing. I know many of you out there are really into zombie stuff. And like, I've seen some zombie films in my day. But I've kind of seen it all. And I don't necessarily want to see it in Doctor Who. That we're seeing that it was the suits all along and the people were just dying, that's a great twist. That's that's something you really don't see coming, but it's so Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it it was something that was um, a cool twist, but it still made it creepy, you know. You have the, the dead bodies are in there, and they look creepy, and they look dead because they, you know, died out in space. So it, it it's this added element to it, you know. It would have been goofy just to have these empty spacesuits walking around, you know, zapping people. Uh, I, I really liked that, you know, the dead people in there, that added an element of, of horror to it a little bit and just really right. chilling stuff. It's a little grotesque, but everything in Capaldi's run has been just a little grotesque. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That, that It's definitely a definition of Capaldi's, Capaldi's era. And, of course, the reason the suits were attacking is it's space capitalism. At its best. <laughs> oh, yet again. <laughs> oh, yet again. The company, the corporations, ruin it all. <laughs> this is the second time Which this season the doctors fought, fought capitalism. <laughs> I was just gonna say this is <laughs> this the season has been very political, and yeah. this is this episode is no uh, is no exception to that. Yeah, um, yeah. I like sure. the idea that they had to pay by the breath. You know, I basically you get so many breaths and then you're out. 
and and you owe them your life. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and not to get too political here, but it, it, there's a lot of um, a lot of people who believe that healthcare is a privilege and not a right. And that's exactly what this is. This is if you have the right. money, you you get the breaths. You know, it's not a right to be able to breathe on your your space mining mission. It, it's it's a privilege <laughs> that if you have enough money, and it's just like right. yeah. So that's a it was a great is a great message, and you know the doctor at the end, um, you know really drives that message home with his, you know you, you know you guys are just profits to them. You're not people and all this stuff. And right. So they, they did a really good job with that. When he sort of starts the revolution against the company, which right. you know it's funny because it, it reminds me of um, the 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 almost people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From you know where where, where you've got those um, the gangers. What? Yeah, yeah, the gangers, and where where they they you know they they go at the end. He drops them off so they can go, you know. Like fight the company and start mm-hmm. the revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's really big about that. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly that happens at the end. They go to the head office. They say. <laughs> um, and I liked what he said. You know, uh, he's, he he's like, if I remember correctly, in six months, corporations are brought down. Humanity gets itself involved in a newer problem. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's the new problem? <laughs> Well, and it, it makes it seem so ominous, like like something, like he knows something was about to happen, uh-huh. and I'm I'm actually kind of excited. I'm 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 interested in the idea of what it could be that that he's referring to, and like now I'm racking my brain of old episodes and what they might mean, like what he's what he's referring to. Oh yeah, you know, is that a reference to something, or is it just, you know, <laughs> just the throwaway line? Right. <clears throat> um, and of course, you've got you've got Bill, uh, yes, who. Unfortunately, dies. Oh my god! Okay, so, so to speak. <laughs> she. This episode was crazy. Okay, there were there were so many WTF moments in this episode. Twice, yeah. Bill dies twice in this episode, and I was like, "What is going on? How are they going to get out of this? What what's happening?" And it was just, <laughs> "How are they going to get out of this?" <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's ob- You know, it's one of those. It's like, well, she's obviously not dead, but like, how could she possibly be alive? <clears throat> you right. know, so it was like when they went, when they went out in space for the first time, and her thing malfunctioned, and they couldn't get her helmet on, and they were like, "You're about to be, you know, exposed to the vacuum of space." I was like, "How in the heck could she possibly come back from this?" <laughs> and right. uh, they did it. I mean, and that's the thing. Jamie Matheson wrote this episode brilliantly with so many just great twists and um, yeah. And things that were not just for shock value, but that just added to the story and just were, I don't know, brilliant. I, I can't, I can't give it enough credit for for how good it is. It was great. Well, and he, you know, he he leaves all these like little plot threads, so he can pick up on them later. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's leading you down. When they first find the suits that they get in them, the first thing the doctor says is, "These were in in the shop for repair." So right away you know there's going to be a problem with one of the suits. And when Bill's suit starts kind of failing her, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's that's going to be a part of, probably a part of how they get into a further mess. But it doesn't occur to you to say, that's how they're going to get out of a mess. You know, and that's right. that's how she survives that second time, was because it was a screwed up, a screwed up suit. Mm-hmm. Her battery was low. <laughs> she wasn't actually dead. <laughs> So the doctor loses Bill twice mm-hmm. during this episode, but then he loses something far more important: his sonic screwdriver. Oh my god! I, not I'm not even kidding. There, an audible gasp came out of my mouth <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when when the when the suit crushed the sonic screwdriver. I was like, oh my god, no! <laughs> like I could not believe it. And then I laughed at myself for how ridiculous I was being. <laughs> Literally, an audible gasp came out. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> "Well, but you know, this means that he might end up having four sonic screwdrivers by the time his his, his role as the doctor is done." Because he had he had the Smith screwdriver, right? Eleven screwdriver. He had his screwdriver. He had the sonic sc- sunglasses. So maybe he'll have a fourth one. <laughs> maybe a new, 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 new screwdriver. <laughs> 
Well, and speaking of the sunglasses, they make a comeback. Hooray! They make it. Whoa! I don't I think we've seen them yet. I did too. He's he's he. Well, and now you know, of course, he's wearing them to hide. Yes. <laughs> the fourth <laughs> thing he lost, he lost Bill twice, or he, you could say he lost Bill. He lost the TARDIS. He That's lost right. a screwdriver. Then he lost his eyesight. The Doctor is blind. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Which I think was great. How I wonder. Was... I wonder if, because um, we know Stephen Moffat wrote the next episode, so I wonder if he was like, it's like Jamie Matheson. He read Jamie Matheson's script and he was like, "Oh, the Doctor goes blind," and then he's like, "Oh, you know what? Keep him blind. <laughs> it's gonna I, work I... so well for my next episode." <laughs> Yes, I really think that sometimes Stephen Moffat sits down to write an episode and he goes, you know what, I gotta challenge myself today. What if the Doctor's blind? <laughs> Let's write that story. Yeah. And like, I, I think sometimes he's just like randomly picking stuff and he's like, how can I make this even harder? What if the Doctor already used up all of his regenerations? What do we do then? <laughs> well, that's good writing. I mean, that's what just if, good. <laughs> what if he hates humans? <laughs> <laughs> No, it is. It's very good writing, and that's uh, Moffat challenges himself. So I'm excited because that I, now I know I know we have differing differing opinions on this. <laughs> I loved that final line. <laughs> Don't get me makes. wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love the twist that he's still blind. <laughs> I think that's great. But the end. I thought the end was. It just didn't match the tone of the rest of the episode. I don't know what right. it was. It was all it was missing was dun dun dun. Just, just the way he was, said it, I was like, and it zoomed in on him, and then it went to black. He was like, <laughs> I'm still blind. <laughs> but no, but that's the best part. That's even because it's so he even dr- dramatically so took his dramatic. sunglasses off. No, he not did, all. He did. I'm still blind. <laughs> it was so dramatic. Uh, but, like you had to go further into the into into being dramatic. You had to, it had to be melodramatic. It, it had just, to be over the top. It was just then, a little too much for me. <laughs> uh, so just so everyone knows, that's the level of cheesiness that you get with Voices from the Vortex, the narrative podcast that we do year to year, <laughs> season to season. Yes, that um, that was perfect for our show. <laughs> <laughs> This, it's Jamie Matheson's been listening to our work, hasn't he? He must have. Dang it. <laughs> oh, him and Moffat sit around the campfire and, and, and listen on a little radio. <laughs> Eating s'mores. <laughs> Eating s'mores. Uh, no, I, I think I think this is a really great plot. I, this is a really great story and it, really compelling. Yes, I, I agree. Definitely. So with the characters, we we definitely saw more development uh, for Bill. Well, yeah, and you know, I even thought, um, you know, this was the first. Um, I mean, she's been in danger the last several, you know, episodes, right. but this one was like, you know, her life was on the line, and the doctor right. sort of even gambled with her life, and I thought at the end she was going to complain to him. I like when he, when she comes and can kind of confronts him in his office at the end, but she doesn't really yeah. confront him. She just kind of talks to him. <clears throat> um, she has that line where she's like, so does that work complaining to the head office? And, uh, I thought she was then about to complain to him <laughs> as, and right. she's going to say, okay, well I'm going to do it then. And then I thought she was going to tear into him, but she didn't. So, um, I don't know. Maybe she just solved all that internally, but I would have been, you know, I, I would think that she would have been more upset with him, but he, he saved the day, so, you know. <laughs> well, and, you know, it all goes back to that preview uh, that they gave us, the Time for Heroes preview, um, where she talks about, you know, this has been the best time of my life if it doesn't kill me, you know. And I, I so already from the get-go, we've got that sort of red herring thrown at us from Moffat, mm-hmm. which is... Oh, wink, wink. She's gonna die, huh? Maybe. <laughs> and so, like every episode, it's been, it's been, it's been ratcheting up. It's been, you know, the danger gets more serious. Her life is in more danger. Uh-huh. And um, I, I, I honestly wonder if, if there isn't, if this isn't. I, I wonder if it's being clever or if it's really showing us, you know, this is what happens when you get in bed with the doctor. 
no pun intended, uh, that you end up, you know, you end up dead. You you end up dying. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't really seen a companion die in a very long time. Now, I'm excluding Rory, of course, because Rory dies like a thousand times. (laughs) And then he actually dies, like, right? You see his, his, the timeline on the tombstone. So it's like, oh, well, he's dead. But I mean, everybody dies, so that, that's that's nothing. Um, right, right. That's nothing new. Uh, well, but we haven't seen like a since um, what's her face on the Titanic, since Astrid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You know, and you so know, you're right because I was just gonna say, well, Clara died, but then no, she didn't. <laughs> you know, no, she still got to go. She really didn't. I mean, she she has to go die eventually, but she gets to run around for a little while. Um, but yeah, you're right. So it's kind of it's kind of neat to see you know it's kind of neat to see that there might be and it might be what the development for Bill is. Mm-hmm. Um, now this episode in particular, um, first off, the the racism, it's just <laughs> kind of hitting us over the head with uh with the you're not in the 21st century, guys. He's blue. Get over it. And yeah. It's like, yeah. Okay. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Fair point. Racism of the future. Um, <laughs> it's just. It's it's just really interesting that uh, the, the well, we saw it in um, Thin Ice, mm-hmm. right? And we saw it in Smile. Mm-hmm. Those those two in particular, where they're really, you know, they're taking advantage of again. This season's been very political, and we're looking at twenty first sense twenty first century sensibilities, but in future times. And how does that how does that relate? And I like that. I like that there's a character. Who who has no reason to be racist, right? Obviously, and then you know she's she's gay, she's black, uh, she's she's young, and then she's in the future, and it's like she doesn't realize how easy it is to slip into those things in a time and a place that she knows nothing about. Yeah, and that's just interesting to me. Yeah, because you know, she she she's not racist, but she she was kind of kind of being a little little racist there to the blue guy. Mm-hmm. Just a little, just just a little, not intentional, but it was well, a little. When you turn around and see someone, and then go, ah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's a little no, racist. <laughs> no, plenty of people do that when they see me. It's fine. It's not racist. It's, it's just me. Uh, but to be no, fair, I, Matt, you're not supposed to be in the women's restroom. <laughs> And I'm also not supposed to be wearing the monster mask either. But you know, <laughs> things happen, Taylor. Things happen. Um. <laughs> People have their I, hobbies. I loved, I, people have their hobbies. <laughs> no, I don't do that, for the record. I do not do that to, to, our, to, our, to our last fan out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, it was it was nice seeing Nardal very uh, nervous uh, in that situation, too, with the blue guy, with the racism. And I just, I was, oh, a lot of my friends are blue. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. come on, Nardal. No, no, the line was, the, the line was... Uh, a lot of my friends are bluish, <laughs> which are bluish, which such a great pun. <laughs> I'm so glad. <sighs> I'm so glad that Jamie Madison realizes he he writes a really great, compelling episode, but then he understands <laughs> the humor yeah. that needs to go into an episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's I, and it's nice. See, What's well, nice seeing Nardal and more adventures. I I I'm glad he went with them this time. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, I, you know, um, I like the dynamic of just the Doctor and Bill, but every so often it's nice to have that third person on there, and they add a little bit more to it, um, which I liked. So, you know, those couple of episodes near the beginning of um, Matt Smith's run where Rory would just show up like a couple of times here and there. He would go on this one, yeah. and then, you know, he wouldn't go on this one or, or whatever. Um, I enjoyed that uh, that sort of dynamic. Well, and he's Matt Lucas is is credited this entire season, right? And but there are episodes he's only in it for the little bit of the beginning or a little bit of the end, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, that's fine. He's he's a companion this season. And I I get that we don't need him here the whole time, but man, I like him on the adventures because he's he's such a good sidekick to the Doctor. Uh-huh. And sometimes I feel like the Doctor needs a sidekick, not someone to teach. Bill is the person he's teaching. It's a student. Nardal is his sidekick. And sometimes you just want that back and forth, that witty banter, that uh-huh. Batman and Robin. Yeah. Um, I, I liked his whole bit about he, he had dated the girl who did the voice for the, for the suits. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yes. That was a good bit. Very much. 
Um, so the one thing I wanted to talk, the doctor, uh, sort of his character development in here is um, he ha- it, he did that old thing that was like, well, of course he has a plan. <laughs> you know, we knew, but yeah. he was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to blow the whole thing up. Um, and then it turned out that the suits didn't want to zap them at the end. So, um, but for a minute there, I was like, okay, the doctor's lost his mind. <laughs> He's just like, that's it. I'm just gonna, you know, we'll die. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll send him a message. Ha ha. And I'm like, uh, wait a minute. Don't you have to, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> this is so... Well, and you know, there's, yeah, but I mean, you knew it was, you knew it was a fake out. Well, right? of course, you knew of that he had a plan yeah. because there's, this is only episode five of a 12 episode season. And like, <laughs> They're not going to suddenly. Next episode isn't going to be called, you know, um, Nardole in the Tardis. It's it's, it's still Doctor <laughs> Who. It's it's the f- the further adventures of Nardole and Nardole friends. And Nardole, and friends. Nardole. <laughs> also starring special guest appearance by River Song. Like, they're not going to do that, you know. They're, right, right. Obviously, he has a plan. So sometimes with stuff like that, though, like I'm I'm never impressed by the. I I like it when he you know has the secret plan. But I'm also not impressed by it anymore, because right. What's it really gonna now? Him being blind, that I didn't think they were gonna keep that going. So obviously his plan, there he was being a little more reckless, um, right? But uh, no, I it's yeah, you know he's not gonna die. You know he's not gonna regenerate until the Christmas special. So you know, don't don't worry. <laughs> it's it's never a secret plan. It's always it's there. Right. It's always there. So now we're looking at well, we look at the season arc though. So how okay the, the obviously the season arc for this uh, the season is the vault, mm-hmm. right? He's to protect the vault. His oath. What is the oath, right? So, but how can the doctor keep his oath when he's blind? I thought he was supposed to protect the vault. How does he protect the vault now without the ability to see? Yeah, and I mean that's um, that's definitely going to be a problem. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. I guess my main big question is, you know, is this just going to be, you know, just for this next episode or is this for the rest of the season? You know, is he ever going to see again? That's um, or is this going to be, you know, just until he regenerates or something? You know, so what? what's... I'm really curious to see how they're going to work this in. Well, and I'm going to say this now, even though we're going to talk about the uh, trailer here in a minute, but um, the whole premise of the next episode is there's a book in the Vatican that anyone who's ever read it has gone crazy and killed themselves. How does the doctor read a book if he's blind? (laughs) Yes, that's what saves him. (laughs) Moffat! (laughs) Like, that's... That's a, one of the, that's a sticky wicket, if I ever saw one. One of the monks goes, there's a Braille version, and he pulls it out. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor reads it in Braille. That could be, that could be. No, I think his eyes will heal. I think, I think, we're, I don't think he's going to be blind the rest of the season. And, or, you know, we've seen plenty of promotional stuff with him wearing the sunglasses. Mm-hmm. So maybe the rest of the season, he has to wear those to keep himself to give him the ability to see he puts those on and he can see again but he takes them off and it's it's blurry and he, he has to kind of go about with his other wits right and that could be interesting yeah that would be good um did you oh, did you did you catch the whole thing uh nardal says something about uh, and i can't remember the exact quote i apologize nardal says something about um that vault's never meant to be open never supposed to be opened at the very beginning, he's talking to the doctor about leaving. Right, right. He says that that vault's never supposed to be open, but that the end of last episode, the doctor went in. He opened the vault and went inside. Oh yeah, I noticed that too. There's a Nardole has another line at the end where he's like, you know, what if that vault opens? Like, what if it gets open? When he's like, sort of yelling yeah. at him at the end, and I was like, he yeah. just went in there and had Mexican food. <laughs> so did Nardole know he went in there? Because I, Nardole I left. Right. Well, and the doctor made him go away. He's like, no, <laughs> goodbye. I got it. You know. Yeah. So it's. I think. I think the doctor's playing reckless with something that he's not. So he shouldn't be. I guess. I'd. Say, well, and yeah, and that's you know we've we've talked about what we think it might be and. Well, and it's um, funny too. Obviously, he. It's funny too because yeah. he he, um, Nardole has these um, 
these rules, but all these rules came from the doctor. <laughs> so like, right. N- Nardal's trying to get him to follow his own rules about the vault. <laughs> and it's, right. it's like, how, there's no way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very interested in finding out, yeah, how this is going to play out with, especially the blind. Thing. I, now I, I think it'd be great. I, I, if he's blind for the rest of the season, whatever. But I think that really hampers a lot of the storytelling you can do. Sure. Now, you know, I mean, obviously, obviously it does. The, anytime right. you add a handicap to your character of any sort, mm-hmm. that's going to kind of hamper what you can do going forward. Uh, you know, so if he didn't have legs, he'd have to be in a wheelchair, right? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So that, yeah. Um, my point is, so, okay, so I, I'm, just, I'm just really interested. I'm just, I'm... Moffat once again surprises me with his ability to come up with new ideas and, and push boundaries. Yeah, I mean we're so used to everything being wrapped up, and for the most part, and unless we know that this is the the three part finale, everything being wrapped right. up in a nice neat little bow at the end. Um, and <laughs> you know anything, none of the con- there's no consequences for whatever happened this episode that'll affect the next one. And then here he threw us a curveball, so. Uh, the uh, what did you think of the production on this episode? I mean, I thought I thought it was, I thought it was beautiful. Oh, I thought it was really great. Um, you know, the des- the design of the suits and sort of the, I loved the, um, you know, the holographic, uh, the sort of invisible force field around their heads as a helmet thing. I thought yeah. that that was good. I like that. And then, um, yeah, just the whole thing was very creepy and very tense. They did a really good job at the beginning that that cold open where it would switch from where they could hear and then where we couldn't hear because it was, you know, like we could hear yes. from the woman's perspective and then from the man's perspective, he couldn't hear her because their microphones weren't working right. or whatever. Um, that was really good. I, I enjoyed uh, that bit. Um, and yeah, the, the, the production of this, everything about it just made, it was so creepy and so tense and just, yeah, electrifying. It was very claustrophobic. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> Uh, there's just times when, like, you especially, especially when they were, you know, in like obviously out in space, they wanted to be as claustrophobic as possible, because um, you're always thinking, no, look behind him. I want to see what's going on behind him. Camera, look behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like that. You know, when you're in the when you're doing space stuff, you want it to be a little claustrophobic. Yeah. What is is I okay? So I'm looking at the sets. Do those sets remind you? Are, are these? I swear it looks like the same corridors and rooms they used on Kill the Moon and the Moon Base that they used in Last Christmas uh, at the Christmas Base, and then the same ones they used in uh, Before the Flood and whatever the other one was, (laughs) (laughs) Under the Lake. Uh, Good old uh, BBC. (laughs) Well, they 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 dress it up a little differently, but it it looks very similar. They all look very similar. (laughs) Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Yeah, I, it's I'm I'm sure they dressed it up a lot different. And if I were to look back, I bet I I bet I could tell. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then again, the doctor did when remember when they went to the uh, the the Satan moon, uh, the 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 planet orbiting the black star or the black sorry the black hole, and uh, they said something about he says oh they build these out of kits. And I'm like, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe they really... It's, that's the explanation. It's, yes. It's built out of a kit. That's right. It's their excuse. They can just use it for any, any time. Uh, yes. Uh, so you have any favorite moments or quotes from this one? Oh, God. A lot of good quotes. Uh, one of my favorite Nardole quotes was... Uh, Bill asks, what do I do if I throw up? And he just says, colors and smells. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah, I remember Perfect. that. <laughs> um, I love. Well, I love the opening tag. Right? It's it starts with space, the final frontier. Oh, that was like, great. Come on, it's, it's just it's it's so like Doctor Who to take to take something, take a moment to be like, let's let's do an homage to Star Trek, and at the same time break down every boundary of what is Star Trek. <laughs> We're Doctor <laughs> Who. We're the British. Yeah, that was a really. Um, I, but, I really liked that that bit at the front. That was good. That was a good line. A good, uh, just good reference. <laughs> well, and, and you know that that feeds into you know Star Trek was always about confronting social norms and was about confronting you know what people expected. A big part of that was also uh, confronting racism. Mm-hmm. And this episode, like many of these episodes, have, have been very political and about 
about that. So maybe it is. Maybe it's more than a coincidence. Maybe this is a huge homage to Star Trek. Yeah, maybe. Um, I had a, I only had a couple more lines that I thought were really funny. Uh, just I don't know. Just the Doctor saying, "Oh, I'm bound to be right eventually." <laughs> it's, it's like, he just kept like he kept guessing at the beginning, and he's like, "Oh, I'm bound to be right eventually. One of these will stick." <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then later when he, she's like you know oh you're blind he's like that's okay I have some I, I have some extra eyes on the TARDIS they're from a lizard but I'm sure they'll work just fine <laughs> why does he keep that stuff <laughs> <I don't. laughs> well and that's so great All you know right. that the doctor can be funny and you know because and there was that whole line where Bill was like don't do that and he's like oh what tell jokes you know he's like yeah you only tell jokes when you're uh you know, trying to make me not be scared or whatever, and uh, or when it's you're trying to make it not seem so serious, yeah. and then later when she when he has to leave her and she's like, "Tell me a joke, tell me a joke." I was like, "Oh god." <laughs> That's that that was that was hard. That was hard to watch. Yeah, that hard was to a... watch him leaving someone. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, well, and you know, because usually he's like, "I will save you. It's okay. I got you. You know, uh, it's okay. You're gonna be right. fine." Yeah, he's and always he kind of said that. He's always but... got something. He, he kind of said that, but he also said, you know, oh, I don't know. This might work, hopefully, you know, but you have to yeah. trust me, you know. And so it was, re- yeah, it was really hard. He's playing it fast and loose. <laughs> yes, he was. fast and loose. Yeah. So what are your final thoughts, Taylor? Well, my final thought is Jamie Matheson has done it again. Um, this literally, this was one of the <laughs> most thrilling and engaging episodes of Doctor Who I've ever watched. And it... I mean, it, it, for me, it's up there, you know, with all the really good Capaldi ones that we love, you know, Heaven Sent, mm-hmm. uh, Listen, um, trying to think of some other ones, but it, it's also just, you know, it's, it's the quality I've come to expect from Jamie Matheson and he, he delivered again. Um, there were some really amazing doctor moments in this that we've talked about. And I, I mean, basically I was captivated the whole time watching this. I was just... On the, on, on the edge of my seat. So this this episode put me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I I share that sentiment. I I mean I absolutely loved it. Um, this this is one of those few episodes that has I mean great suspense. First off, I, you really don't know what's happening from moment to moment. Like you say, you're on the edge of your seat. Um, it had some great action moments without having huge over the top action moments. Um, the the whole thing with them in space where it was she was kind of coming in and out you know, of consciousness you know and she could see kind of you saw glimpses of what was happening I mm-hmm. thought that was very clever I thought that was very smart um, there's lots of characters uh, there were a lot of character moments and defining character moments um, that reveal more about who they are about Bill about the Doctor about Nardal and about their mission about what they're trying to do um, and but and at the end of it of course that final reveal where it just cuts the black and he says, I'm still blind. I mean, I can, I could, I write that cheese and I would love to seeing it on TV. Like that made me so happy <laughs> to see Dr. Who come down to, come down to my level of writing. I was very excited. So, um, absolutely wonderful episode. One of the best Capaldi's that we've seen in three seasons. Calculating voices from the vortex gifts oxygen ten out of ten. Oh, my God, that promo! So, yeah, oh, my God, that promo. Oh my god, that promo. Oh my god, that promo. <laughs> Actually, I, the promo <laughs> was good. To say. The promo was good. So you've got you've got lots of Vatican stuff and you have this this you know, everyone who's read this, which we've already mentioned before, but everyone who's read this, you know, is going to die or, you know, goes crazy and kills themselves, which uh, really reminded me of the very first episode of Sherlock. <laughs> Where the oh, guy's yeah. like, yeah, he's like, we'll just talk, and then you're going to kill yourself at the end. And I was like, oh, okay. So 
Right. We know Moffat's good at writing that. What's the what's the twist going to be this time? <laughs> you know, what's the trick? Right. Well, and I... So this promo doesn't actually give us any more, really, than we had already seen in the previews for this season. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that Missy shot is the same Missy shot we saw in the, in the preview, in the trailer for the season. Yeah, so, and I was like, that's it? Ugh. <laughs> I know, I she know. She didn't say anything. It was just, like, so quick. And it was right at the end, just to show you, like, yup, that's right, she's in this one, don't worry, <laughs> we got you, she's here. Yep, she's coming. <laughs> Get ready. Um, but that you're right. Danger, just, just... action, suspense, suspense, suspense. Oh, yeah, and Missy. <laughs> the end. <laughs> and Missy. <laughs> um, I, I'm very excited to see Missy and Capaldi interact in this one. I'm very excited to see. I, I, I We haven't visited the Vatican in, uh, in, in Doctor Who yet. We haven't mm-hmm. done the Pope. And... <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. No, but I'm excited for that. I'm excited to. I love when Doctor Who treads new ground, and it's a show that's 50 years old, so it doesn't tread a lot of new ground. It can't, but it does. And you know, some of these previews have not been nearly as good as they've been in past seasons. That's fine. You don't have to reveal everything for me. That's fine. But um, I'm de- I'm definitely interested. I'm down. I'm ready. I'm ready to see. Yeah, it looks really good, and hopefully this will break the. Um the streak of um great okay great yes. okay great <laughs> hopefully this one's not just okay well, hopefully it's it's great <laughs> yeah but it's steven moffat we're almost guaranteed it's going to be great because he does i mean i am hard pressed to think of a steven moffat episode that i would go that that sucked yeah i'm hard pressed <laughs> well that brings us uh, to the end um taylor thank you for joining me today well, thank you. I think I, I'm looking at my thing here. I think I have about uh, five breaths left. So, uh, all right, let's, everybody, we gotta wrap it up. Hold your breath. We'll see you to the vortex. Ready and <gasps> no. This has been another Voices from the Vortex review for series ten. Starring Matthew Whitecamp as Matt the Time Lord, Taylor Davidson as Taylor the Time Lord, and Danielle Davidson as the sexy voice of the TARDIS. All views expressed are the opinions of the two dudes from Gallifrey, and as such should be taken extremely seriously. Follow Voices from the Vortex on all social media, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Subscribe to us on iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the podcast, please email us at VoicesFromTheVortex at gmail.com. Doctor Who and all related materials are copyright BBC, and no infringement of copyright is intended. It's heavily implied, but never intended. All material is fan fiction of a satirical nature. Please, Mr. Moffat, don't sue us. We know you have a sense of humor. See you next time in the Vortex! Engaged. Returning to the vortex. End of transmission.